Okay, so here we have paper one again, section C. This is for you if you do glacial erosion uh, and deposition. Looking at the Lake District as an example of a landscape that was previously glaciated. Okay, kick off with an OS map. Here we are, remember, the closer the, the contour lines, the steeper the landscape. And if it's really steep, you'll have these cliffy marks of, of various different types. Therefore, you can see here a flat bottomed glacial trough and you can see some other features marked on here. But do remember with OS maps, apart from six figure grid references, you might be asked a question such as, in what direction is the water flowing out of Red Tarn? In this case, of course, it would be an easterly or a, a northeasterly direction. You get credit for either of those, to be perfectly honest. Okay, so these features, erosion. First of all, we have the obvious feature of the tarn the enclosed or a circular feature that's been left behind by the excavation, the rotational excavation. Um, bear in mind they're called different things, a cirque in France, a coombe in Wales, and here a corrie, which is English or Scottish. Now around the back of the corrie on the side, you get a steep arete, which is the precipice between two um, different valley systems. And here's an arete, this is the most famous, this is Striding Edge on the side of Helvellyn. Helvellyn is not a pyramidal peak. Remember, your example of a pyramidal peak is always Mont Blanc uh, in France up in the Alps. And then finally, a glacial trough in terms of erosion features, a flat bottom, steep sided valley. Um, very, very clear, you can see Grisdale, and here's one with hmm, Ribbon Lake in there. Bit of a cheat, there isn't one all the time there. Okay, what about deposition? The most obvious feature about deposition is the erratic rocks in the wrong place and here you can see the most famous field of erratics there's a few in here and this is at a place called norba and they're known as the norba erratics and they're found near settle and that's where this landscape and this image is taken from you won't see them showing up individually on an os map of course because they're just too small but they're made of one rock in this case, case this is a grit stone sitting on top of a nice limestone platform erratics usually found in the number a bit like this other feature over here, not a great image, but they're very difficult to see in the landscape because the material has been weathered over time and eroded by rivers and also as the glaciers themselves re retreated. This is a drumlin, usually found in multiples. They're called a swarm of drumlins. Great term, that a swarm of drumlins. Typical feature, they've got a steeper slope from where the glacier came from and then the glacier tapers and has moved the material down the valley. Okay, so steep up, up uh, valley slope and then tapered down. And these have been formed by a glacier essentially dropping material and then reworking it as it's moved over. But really it's the meltwater at the base of the glacier that's reworked them to give them this kind of fluvial fa fashion, this kind of streamlining effect. But they are two of the first types of depositional feature. Most common depositional features are things called moraines. And the glaciers not use water to move this material. It's either the material that's just fallen off the sides of the valley onto the glacier and dropped. That gives you a lateral moraine. You can see those here labeled in the diagram here, and then the gray bits here. And then this is a lateral moraine there. And then if the moraine is actually going across the valley, it's because the glaciers got to the valley, um, as far down the valley as it can, and it's carried on depositing material before it's then retreated and that's giving you a moraine at the bottom of the valley as far as it went and that's called a terminal moraine. The thing is though, a terminal moraine after that as the glacier um, retreated all that melt water would have actually broken through the terminal moraine. So typically you don't see terminal moraines in landscapes because they've been reworked by the river. So you might just see a little bit out here and a little bit out there. Very difficult to spot. Uh, Finally, where two lateral moraines, if you look at this diagram over here, if you look at these, a lateral moraine here and a lateral moraine here from this glacier, where they, the glaciers meet, they came together and he kept their moraine in the middle, rather like a zip fastener, and that's called a medial moraine. The problem again with the medial moraine is if you go to the Lake District, the medial moraine, if you imagine there's one in the middle, has just been wiped out and obliterated by either the glacier itself or by meltwater. So again, medial moraines you can't see very often. And finally, my favorite type of moraine, this is something called a ground moraine. And the ground moraine is simply as the glacier is retreating, it was dropping stuff as it was retreating. It smeared the landscape with all that it had on top. A mix of boulders and clay and small pieces and large pieces. 
disorganized piles of rock, a little bit like peanut butter, but not smooth peanut butter because you've got the crunchy, nutty bits inside as well. So the ground moraine doesn't have a distinct feature. And of course, now it's covered in soil and vegetation. You won't see it unless you go digging down into it, but you won't see that on an OS map. There you go. There's your depositional features. As with all these videos, have a search on Kahoot at some point and we may have been able to upload a Kahoot for you. Likewise, an Ed puzzle may follow as well. It'll always be F case study. Don't know what the F stands for. It means be fantastic in your exams, guys.